they do the broadcast. Oh, we're being live streamed. Starting. Yes. Okay, everyone, we were not in Facebook land for a while and we were talking away, but we got hooked in. So, hey, I'm Linda Evans Shepherd, and we're, get, we're getting ready to do a live stream. In fact, maybe we're live streaming now. So I'm just gonna fill the airways for just a moment as we are waiting to make sure we are live streamed. But I am the author of the book, Releasing Tomorrow, Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And we are going to have so much fun today. The first thing you need to know, we are having a drawing. In fact, we're having two drawings. We're having one at the end of the program, and we're giving away a $25 gift card. If you are outside the U.S., we're going to be giving you a wonderful audible version of the book, The God You Need to Know. If I can turn it right, there it is. Uh, discover his story, experience his love. And so, but we have something for everyone. We've got children's Bibles, coloring Bibles for adults. We have books, we have beautiful jewelry, and we have more Amazon gift cards. So if you want to get into the drawing, go to joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L, winner, W-I-N-N-E-R, dot com and get signed up so that you can be in the drawing. So now I'm guessing that we are now live. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Linda Evans Shepherd, And today I am your joy coach. We are going to take a joy break. If your team didn't win the Super Bowl, or even if it did, we are taking a joy break right now, and we are going to experience the joy of the Lord. I mean, we know that Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> I think he had joy because he ate whatever bugged him. Okay. <laughs> Sorry for that one. I promise you that my new book has no jokes or puns in it. Uh, make time for joy. So you might want to pick up your copy right now. Um, you will not get it until tomorrow if you order it on Kindle. And it is, I think, available now on Audible. But pick up a copy right now and uh, and have it coming in the mail to you because this is going to be your ticket to joy this year. And why do we need joy? Well, because we have all come out of a pretty tough season and the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so I want you to just know that you can choose joy. Let me show you real quick a little bit about the book. It's Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And the format goes like this. We have a prayer on one side, and on the other side, we have the actual scriptures that the prayer has been crafted from, paraphrased with my words all embedded in, into it to make it a beautiful prayer for you to pray. This is a great book for you to pray through every morning, every day. Start your day with a joy break. Set your heart and your mind toward joy. And so... We are going to be having a drawing. We're going to do two drawings at the bottom of the hour. Uh, we are going to be drawing for uh, a beautiful Amazon gift cards. Aren't Amazon gift cards beautiful? Well, there's one in the queue for you. If you're outside the U.S., you're going to be up for my beautiful book, um, The God You Need to Know. And that's in the audible form, and we can deliver that to you instantly. But you can go to joyfulwinner.com and get signed up joyfulwinner.com and so tomorrow at noon or after the noon hour mountain time we are going to have the big drawing so even if you don't win at the bottom of our time together you will have the opportunity to come in and watch we're going to have one of those roulette wheels with names on it, and we're going to click and it will stop, and there will be winners, winners, winners. In fact, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to share my screen so that you can see what you're going to win, all of these beautiful things. Like I said, books, children's books, coloring Bibles, jewelry, and then, of course, if you are outside the U.S., you will win the God you need to know, discover his story, experience his love. Well, I'm excited to tell you that I have 
some very special guests with us today. One of my guests is named Grace Fox. And I think a fun fact about her is that she lives on a boat in Canada. And so here she is all the way from her boat. And we're going to hear about her. And I want you to know that, um, that she is, here we go. She, she is, um, pardon me, I'm looking through my notes. I, to see where I am and my, okay, well, I'll just tell you. She is a delightful international worker. She goes around the world helping people, coaching people, loving on people. And she has many books. How many books have you written? Five books altogether? Uh, 13 now. Oh, 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 well, tell us your latest <laughs> book so people will know. So the latest one is a devotional with 90 very short, concise meditations. And it's called Fresh Hope for Today, Devotions for joy on the journey. Yes, and I see that you are also a member of the First Five Bible Study Writing Team for Proverbs 31 and a regular contributor to Guidepost, Annual Devotional Mornings with Jesus. And you co-host a podcast called Your Daily Bible Verse. Grace, why don't you share a little joy with us today? Okay, so a little bit of joy. Uh, I kept thinking, now, we've been through, as a world, a really hard uh, joy busting time is what we could call it. And it seems these things just keep happening. Big things keep happening to bust people's joy. So what would be the key to having joy or to getting that joy back? And I thought the, the greatest key that I can think of would be intimacy with God or friendship with God. And I, I thought of this little phrase, the deeper our friendship with God, the greater our joy. And so I want to talk about that just for a few minutes this morning on what we can do to grow that friendship so that we can have joy. Uh, Psalm 1611 says this, you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. And I love that. It's like joy in God's presence. And we don't have to wait till we're in heaven someday to be in his presence that way. We can enjoy his presence right now and have that fullness of joy. Uh, I'm going to give you some four little tips here in a moment, but I just want to add that this morning, even just this morning, I was reading uh, something and out popped this quote, and I thought I've got to share it with the friends here this morning during this launch because it's so relevant. And it says this, when I think upon my God, my heart is so full of joy that the notes dance and leap from my pen. And the person who said that would, was the composer, Joseph Hayden. So as he was writing music, he says, the notes just leap and dance from my pen because he's thinking of God as he's doing it. And the joy is so great that it just flowed out of him. And I thought that was just so beautiful. And so how can we have notes dance and leap from our pen, so to speak, in whatever it is that we're doing? And I thought of this, the... Uh, four portals. Let's talk about portals through which that friendship with God can grow. The first one would be prayer. And Richard Foster, in his book, The Celebration of Discipline, he said, of all spiritual disciplines, prayer is the most central because it ushers us into perpetual communion with the Father. For years, when it came to prayer, I got frustrated because I thought, I'm not doing it right. I'm not doing it good enough. My prayers aren't effective because I might be missing the mark somehow. And then I realized that I don't have to pray according to the way people write books about how I need to pray. I need to look at the template of the Lord's Prayer and see what elements are involved in that. But God made me a certain way. And and he made me to have fellowship with him in that way that he created me with my DNA. And so I can pray in the way that he made me. And that brings me joy. Trying to do it the way other people say that I should just makes me frustrated. And that's a joy buster for me. And so praying in the way that God made me to, to fellowship with him is great. Uh, so I, I enjoy that. And I find that... Um, Taking this inner monologue that I that I can speak to myself over and over again and turning that into dialogue with God, that brings me joy too. And what I mean by that is, if, if you're like me, there are inner thoughts like, like, I can't do that. I could never do that. She's doing so much more than me. I could never measure up. And I start the comparison. 
but and worrisome thoughts, thoughts about my kids or my grandkids. What if thoughts start coming around? But to lasso those thoughts, bring them back, and that um, that brings me joy when I bring them into alignment with God's uh, God's promises that 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 uh, contrast all of those what if worrisome kinds of thoughts. Portal number two is learning to listen, just taking time aside with no agenda, going into God's presence and, and not giving him my whole list of prayer requests, but to say, what do you want to say to me today? What is it you have for me today? And being quiet and just journaling those thoughts down. The third thing that really helps me in uh, building up my joy in the middle of those hard places would be to express gratitude because there's so many things that I would tend to take for granted in my life. But, I, you know, and when I'm in a, a place of living in a joy busting situation, I overlook those things that are, you know, I, that, that are good. Often they're just first world problems, but to express gratitude and thank the Lord for all he's done, everything he's given me, whether it be sunshine today or two legs to walk on or food in the fridge. I don't have to worry about where it's coming from for the next meal to give thanks in all things. And then the fourth portal through which friendship is grown with God is obey. So when he tells me to do something, to hop to it and to not do it with a begrudging attitude or dragging my feet, but to do it knowing that what he's asking me to do, it might seem impossible to me or really hard, but he will enable me to do that. And when I do what he says with joy, there's more joy that comes as a result of that. And so my friends, whatever it is you're going through today, whatever your journey looks like, know that you can choose joy. You can walk in joy, but focus on your friendship with God. The deeper our friendship with God, the greater our joy. So grow that friendship and your joy will grow too. Wow, Joy, that was a very encouraging. And I have a very important question for you. You bet. Do you know why horses are so joyful? <laughs> you got me on that one, Linda. You're going to have to give me the answer. Because they have a stable environment. <laughs> no way. I know. I go, okay, <laughs> corny, corny. I know, but I wanted to share that joke, Grace, because sometimes we don't get to pick our circumstances. We don't get to pick a stable environment, but yet God promises us that we can still have joy. What would you say to that? I would say amen to that because our circumstances might be all over the board, but we can find our stability in him because he never changes. That's right. And we're going to talk more about that. And Grace, we know that you've got grandkids that you've got to attend to now. So we'll let you go. But I just want to bring the show back to me. So go ahead and, and uh, turn your camera off and we will let you go. But I just want to just remind everyone that we have a very important drawing that you need to know about. You can go to joyfulwinner.com and sign up at the very end of this time together. We're going to pick a winner and we're going to award a $25 Amazon gift certificate. And then tomorrow, so keep signing up. You can, you can sign up. Even if you're watching this not live, you can still sign up because the big drawing will be tomorrow. And we're going to have one of those wheels with all of your names on it. And we're going to pick so many winners. I'm going to show you real quick. Again, all of the wonderful things that we have. Here we go. Um, whoops trying to mark my place too many places so here we go our, our drawing we've got children's bibles jewelry uh books for kids we've got uh, books for adults and all kinds of wonderful things and then for our people outside of the u.s you can win a copy of the audible book the god you need to know discover his story experience his love and so that's it. And be sure and pick up your own copy. The book releases tomorrow. Make time for joy, scripture powered prayers to brighten your day. And yes, that is exactly what it is. So here's what I did. So I took scripture. I did a Bible study about peace on this side and peace as it relates to joy. And then on the other side, this side, I created a beautiful prayer based on these scriptures. And the thing that makes that work so well is God loves it when we pray his word back to him. His word is alive. 
It is full of his presence, of his very spirit. It is a cutting edge sword. And God does not disagree with his word. If you say, for the joy of the Lord is my strength when you're praying, God doesn't go, nope, that's not true for you. No, he agrees with you. And so that's why this is such a powerful experience of prayer. This book would be great for your morning devotional, midday devotional, anytime that you need a break because it says in Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. I say again, rejoice. So be sure and get your copy and be sure and sign up for the drawing, which is at joyfulwinner.com. And you can see it in the notes in the chat joyfulwinner.com. And I'm just going to take a moment and read a prayer from Make Time for Joy. I'm going to read one called, let's see, here we go, God's Comfort. And so here's what it looks like. You can see it. Here we go. And I'm going to read it. I'm just going to read the part with the prayer and I'm not going to read the scriptures. That's something you can do on your own time so that the word and the prayer can come to life for you through the power of the word. So here we go. Dear Lord, there is a secret to comfort and that secret starts with love. Your love for others flowing through me. The secret behind this miracle is Christ himself. Christ is the one who loved me first the one whose love flows through me and into those you have put into my life. This is the secret that money can't buy, the secret that you love me in you so much. You promise that no matter my mistakes, distress, or heartache, you will never leave me or abandon me. One thing I look for in times of grief is that you are there to comfort me. How happy I am when you spread your comfort over my broken heart. Been there. I praise you with joy, God, the father of our Lord Jesus, the father of all compassion and the God of all comfort. Your comfort, you comfort me in my troubles so that I can comfort others in their troubles with the same comfort you use to comfort me. As the shadows of death's darkness fall over my life, I will not give in to fear because you are with me even in the dark times. You cut through the darkness with the light of your guidance and protection. How your unfailing love comforts me just as you promised. Thank you, Lord. Well, this is just a selection and we have this book is divided into so many great categories like joy builders, defeating joy stealers, reclaiming joy, living into joy, and worship into joy. And on that note, speaking of joy, I want to tell you about my next guest who also lives on a boat. So I think we have like a nautical theme today. We're going to be doing a little sailing on the ocean today. And I want to tell you a little bit about Pam. She is the kind of person that, you know, they say that some people when they leave, that's when you experience the most joy, but not Pam. She brings, <laughs> <laughs> she brings the joy when she arrives and she has written all kinds of books. Pam, how many books have you written to date? Uh, turning in 59 today. Oh, turn, oh, 59. And her most famous book that she wrote with her husband, Bill, is Men Are Like Waffles and Women Are Like Spaghetti. And she is also the head, she and her husband, Bill, are the head of Love Wise. And you can find that at love-wise.com. Welcome to our joy break, Pam. We are so uh, glad that you were here. And I know you've got some great words of encouragement for us. But before we go there, I just want to remind everybody, go ahead and go to joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L, winner dot com and sign up for our drawing which will be at the end of this and also tomorrow at noon we are going to be giving away so many great prizes and while you're at it be sure and pick up a copy of the book releasing tomorrow make time for joy on valentine's day it is a love gift for you that god wants you to have so that you can take a joy break every day and pam we're ready for a joy break with you Awesome. Hey, thanks for helping us enjoy the journey. I don't know if that's frontward or backward, but um, I 
I like being on a ride with you, a little tandem bicycle ride. Yes. Um, you know, we, when I think about joy and choosing joy, I have to go back to when we downsized uh, from our big house uh, and gave all of our things away. And then we moved on to a liveaboard boat. And um, that's like a little mini vacation. And then COVID, right? We all have that. And then COVID. Uh, and so they closed our marina and we had downsized to take care of Bill's aging parents. Uh, he'll, Bill's mom's now 93 at the time. They're about 88. And um, so we knew, wow, the best people to take care of Bill's folks during this unknown COVID pandemic thing uh, is probably us. And my husband had just moved a RV over to um, his parents' property to use as an office. Little did we know that just a few weeks later, uh, we would need to move into the RV to live. And I don't know about you, but I was not, quote, a happy camper right away. Uh, because when you think about it, it was never on my goal uh, sheet to be like, oh, I think I want to sell everything and live in a trailer on my in-laws property. No, that wasn't <laughs> there. you know. <laughs> and so I thought, OK, how can we create a joyful environment? And um, one of my friends, uh, the LaFoons, Jan and Laura LaFoon, uh, they are edutainers. And so they hosted like a date night, this comedy date night. And so Bill and I tuned in to be supportive. And they said, yeah, when you're with each other 24-7, um, we've just decided the best way to gain joy is to each one of us go to different ends of the house. And Bill and I started laughing. We're like, we don't have different ends of the house. We have inside and we have outside. That's all we got here. Uh, so we thought we're going to have to be a little bit more creative. Well, um, you have to know a little bit about Bill's folks. Bill's a dad. Uh, was frail of body and Bill's mom has always been uh, as long as I've known her 43 years of marriage frail of mind uh, she's very fearful she's agoraphobic and she's a, a hoarder so it, and she's very explosive and so she can get upset pretty easily um, so I thought okay Lord I'm writing this book on joy. I just released um, Discovering Joy in the book of Philippians. And your word says 74 times in the New Testament, they use the word kairos. Uh, so God uses this word kairos uh, to describe joy. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength is the Old Testament verse, but the New Testament is um, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. So it's a choice to rejoice. It's a verb. And I'm like, okay, if it's a verb, then that means it's an action that I can take. And it, and so it can mean like delight. It can mean thriving. It can mean to hold a festival with God. Uh, it, it, my favorite meaning though is, has got to be calm delight. And the reason why that's my favorite meaning of joy is that it gives you something to do when you're all stressed out. So let's say my mom-in-law is upset over something. I might just push pause and pray and say, Lord, what would bring calm to my mom-in-law right now? What would bring calm to me right now? Maybe playing some music or going on a prayer walk. What would bring delight to my mother-in-law right now? Maybe some lemon cookies. She likes those. Uh, what would bring delight to my heart? A delightful distraction. Maybe I should go on a prayer walk as soon as I help her with her needs. And so by having that simple formula, when you're stressed out, push, pause, and pray. God, show me what will bring calm. Show me what will bring delight. And God will answer you. And uh, for me, oftentimes it was just exactly what you're sharing today, Linda, in that prayer is the key that opens up the windows and the doorways for joy to rush in. So I'm so excited. I want to congratulate you on your new book, Make Time for Joy, because I do believe 
that as we pray and as we seek, looking for that calm delight, God will send it our way. Thank you, Pam. That was very inspirational. And I love, I'm going to teach you that concept in just a couple of minutes as well to kind of bring it in because you really can choose joy. Sometimes it's not about everything is just perfect. I mean, wouldn't that be nice? Everything is <laughs> always just perfect. So you don't have to worry about any stress or distress. You can just go around listening to the birds sing, but if you drove across town today with a car full of screaming kids, or, or if you just have some, some problems that are just overhanging your life, this would be a good time to pray. And thank you, Pam. I'm going to let you hop off into your day, but thank you so much for dropping in. You. We love you. And, and thanks for dropping in. And we will get back to you and be sure and pick up her books. Her books are super. Her Joy in the Philippians, Discovering Joy in the Philippians. That's great. And I just want to talk to you a little bit, uh, just for a moment, about another prayer in my book called Thankfulness. Thankfulness is another key to joy. When you have thankfulness, then it will change your attitude and it will change your perspective. And I wrote a little prayer about that in my book. And here it is. This side is the prayer. This side are the scriptures. I've got some blocked that you can, uh, you can see. But let me just share this quick little prayer with you on thankfulness. Dear Lord, your presence in my life has erased the darkness that once surrounded me. How happy I am to give thanks to you for you are good and your love for me will never waver, but will endure forever. As I remember that you, what you rescued me from, I sing to you with joy and shout to you the rock of my salvation. As I think of my life and what it was like before I had you, I burst with thanksgiving and sing songs of praise for you are for you are great and the king above all gods, the lowly gods of this world cannot compare with your majesty. You hold the depths of the earth in your hands and the snow capped mountain peaks are yours. Not only did you make the sea, you own it. You form the land with your hands and you made me too. You made me complete by filling me with your spirit. So I sing Psalms and I make melody in my heart to you. I am, and I joyfully give thanks to you for everything. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you see what the power of a simple prayer can do, a prayer of thanksgiving. And I can't wait for you to meet my next guest. Before I do, I want to encourage you to pick up your own copy of Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day by me, Linda Evans Shepherd, available from Baker Revell. It is now on, on Amazon. You can, you can order it today and it will start going up tomorrow. It's also an audible format and Kindle. So pick your format and get your copy. And don't forget, to sign up for our drawing today. You can go to joyfulwinner.com and let me show you what you can win. Let me go back to share screen. Here we are, share screen, share. So you can win one of these wonderful things. Look at this beautiful coloring Bible, the Encouraging Heart Handbook. Here is a children's Bible, day-by-day -day Bible that you can read with your children. This is a, a little children's book about the life of Jesus. Here's a grace journal. Here's one of Pam Farrell's books, Discovering the Good News in John, that you can color your way through. We have beautiful jewelry. Here's a beautiful tassel heart necklace, perfect for Valentine's Day, with little matching earrings, some cubic zirconian ear diamonds, and we also <laughs> ear diamonds, and we also have a cross necklace with matching and a little joy 
uh, little joy prayers that you can rip out and give to people. And then we have this beautiful little uh, words of Jesus moment. This is also a coloring and little teapot earrings. So we've got a lot of fun things. And if you happen to live outside of the US, we can't ship all of these wonderful things to you, but here's what we can give you. We have a beautiful audible recording of my book, The God You Need to Know, Discover His Story, Experience His Love. So we're gonna stop share and back to the screen. So remember, you can go to joyful, J-O-Y-F-U-L, winner, W-I-N-N-E-R.com and sign up for the drawing. We're gonna have one just when we're done today for the $25 gift card. We have more Amazon gift cards tomorrow that we'll be giving away. If you are not watching this live, you can still sign up because the main drawing isn't until after lunch tomorrow. So Tuesday after lunch tomorrow on Valentine's Day. And you can be in the drawing for all the wonderful things that I just showed you. And you can pick up a copy of your book, Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And I hope that you will do that. And now let me tell you about our next guest. This is my dear friend, Karen Whiting. Now, Karen doesn't live on a boat, but she did marry a sailor. <laughs> so there is certainly a theme going on here. I do not live on a boat. I live in the Colorado mountains and I did not marry a sailor. I married a physicist <laughs> back in the day. So uh, that's, that's well, your husband might've been a physicist too. I think maybe he was. He was an engineer and okay. was a sailor. <laughs> that is amazing. Well, let me tell everybody a little bit about you. Karen has the heart to nurture the growth of wholesome, joy-filled families and inspire parents to raise a new generation of prayer warriors. She is an international speaker, a former television host, a columnist, and she is the award-winning author of more than 30 books for women. Now, you're about to catch up with me. I know I'm at book 38. This is my book, number 38. Uh, I don't think we can uh, beat Pam at number 59. <laughs> Not that it's a race, but how fun is that? So Karen, welcome. Tell us your joy break moment. We can't wait to hear it. <laughs> my children teach me a lot of things. And my younger daughter seemed to have just been born with the fruit of the spirit of joy. And I learned from her that we need to be around people of joy when we don't feel joy. But Darlene, I would say the word that described her was abundant joy. And she loved to sing praises. When she could first make noises, she gurgled and giggled. When she could first talk, she started singing. When she started to walk, she started dancing. However, that didn't always extend to wanting to learn. <laughs> And when I would say, all right, it's time for you to learn your letters, she would point to the D, trace it and say, because I had them all hanging on the wall, D is for daddy, darling, and dancing. And she would just run off dancing. And I thought, this isn't working well, Lord, help me. And he said, embrace her joy. And I thought, embrace her joy. I need to have her embrace learning. <laughs> I decided, okay, let's try something else. So when I got her to come back in the room, I said, J is for Jesus and joy. And she said, Jesus, joy. And I pointed to the letter J and she traced that. And I learned that I had to give her a joyful reason for each letter for her to want to learn those. And then one day she said to me, let's go outside and praise Jesus with our bubbles. Because I had taught my children, you know, when we were upset or anything, we could go outside and use bubbles to blow away our anger or hurt and give it to him. And then blow praises to him. So we went outside and we also, she loved to blow kisses to Jesus and blow hugs to Jesus and catch them back from him. And I found that it was great to just, you know, gather up with a child and learn to be more joyful. So it's, it's really fun to do that type of thing. And one of the things I learned from that is to every day say, Lord, how can I bless someone and help me notice the blessings that you send me? Because you're close to me and you're going to fill me with joy too. And one day when I wasn't even thinking about that, I'm in a store gathering up materials that I needed. I saw this one woman and I just sort of smiled and waved to her. And she waited for me up at the register so that when I came, she could pay for what I was buying. She was so happy to do that. And I said, 
well, I have to let you know that all these supplies that I'm getting are to make puppets with children for a ministry group. And she said, I'm so glad I'm part of a children's ministry today. And she had me take these two little things. They were uh, car mitts and think of them on me. And when I opened and closed them, you could see I was making an alligator puppet for the children. We just laughed together. But it's so wonderful to be watching for that and knowing that other people are out there wanting to bless someone too. And that's what you should do each day is I wake up and I say, Lord, help me bless someone today. And at the end of the day, I said, who did I bless? Can I also pray for them? And who blessed me today? And that just brings a lot of joy for us. It's so simple. A smile, an encouraging word, an act of kindness can brighten someone's day with joy. And then later you can pray for that person because you may not at that moment know if they know the Lord or not, but you can pray that they will and that joy will make a difference in their life, that they'll want to meet the joy maker of all. It's just amazing how easy it is to spread joy to other people. In fact, Pamela was just on and I, where she said she's turning in her 39th book. Well, I'm turning in my 34th book today. We're co-authoring. <laughs> she's a, a little bit ahead. She's 59. I think I had said the wrong number there. So that's just a great thing to do. And we have been along the way cheering each other up with joy. And she spent a little bit of this time while we were doing this in the hospital even, and that made it a little harder to catch our deadline, but that's okay. I sent her a little joy box and we've just uh, been rubbing each other with joy and that's been fun too. So do make sure you spend time with the joy maker, Jesus in prayer, with the prayers Pam has, and joy with other people. And I'll just mention my Next week, I have something like this going on, Growing a Peaceful Heart, and I'm going to be having a Zoom party with that. So join me, and you can win other prizes there. And I just thank you, Linda, for having me on. Well, we are really glad that you were here. And, oh, I just loved your stories. They were so sweet and joyful and colorful, and they were wonderful. Do you have any last minute note to someone who's going, okay, I need joy, but how do I get it again? <laughs> First, make sure you're not filled with any anger or any negative emotion. That's where you might need something on peace to get the inner peace first so that you can then receive the joy. If you're too full of anger, there's no room for joy. So let go of that and then pray for that joy to come in. Thank you for that, Karen. And we're going to move forward now. But I just want to also add that one thing that you can do is learn how to better trust God. And I'm going to read a prayer on that. But first, I'm going to tell everyone, if you haven't already, you've got to go to joyfulwinner.com so that you can see I'm going to uh, share my screen. Here we go. So you can uh, win one of our wonderful gifts that we have available. We have these wonderful presents. We have a coloring Bible, the Encouraging Hearts Handbook by me, a children's Bible, day by day Bible, the story of Jesus for kids. We have words of Jesus. A moment and you can uh, workbook you can look at that we have cute little teapot earrings we have this beautiful heart long heart tassel necklace with matching heart earrings we have cubic zirconian earrings just in time for valentine's day we have the crosses and we've got this cute little prayer this cute little joy book that has rip out sheets that have joy prayers that you can give to your friends and we also have a a grace journal we also for those of you who live outside the united states it's harder for us to ship so we're going to be giving to people who win our drawing outside the u.s the audible book the god you need to know discover his story experience his love and that is by me and again just go to a joyful winner, J O Y F U L winner.com. We're going to have a drawing in just a few moments, but tomorrow's the big drawing. So if you're watching this later, you can still enter the drawing. Go to joyfulwinner.com and sign up. And tomorrow afternoon, we're going to come in and we're going to have the spinner with names on it. And we're going to let everybody know what you win. Now, back to trusting God. I want to share my prayer of trusting God. Here's the thing. If you can give God 
the very thing that's slowing you down, that's keeping you from a joyful heart, then you can still have joy in your life. And let me read you this prayer called trusting God. And on one side, we've got the prayer. And on the other side, we have the scriptures that the prayer is derived from influenced by. So trusting God, dear Lord, why trust in my own plans when I can confidently put my trust in you? Good point. The act of trusting you is like a tree pushing its hidden roots into pools of deep waters. Its branches become rich with cool green shade. This tree will not wilt even in the hottest of days. When I live with my roots in you, I flourish. My life produces fruit that will honor you and nourish others. So with joy, I commit my ways to you and watch you act on my behalf. You are an endless stream of cool water for my soul. That's why I can trust you to direct my life. As you do, I can only rejoice when you turn my problems into solutions and my difficulties into marvels. I will have so much faith in you that it will become easy to believe. You've already answered my prayer request even before I finish praying. What joy as I watch you respond to my needs by fulfilling my request in such beautiful, loving ways. Thank you, Lord. Wouldn't you like to have a joy break like that every day, or maybe in the middle of the day, in the middle of a difficult situation, just take that time. And I'm going to share some stories before I do. I just want to remind you, sign up for the drawing. It's not too late. Go to joyfulwinner.com, joyfulwinner.com dot com and sign up. You saw all those beautiful things. And don't forget that you can also pick up a copy of my book, Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And so I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement myself today about joy. So the first thing I want to tell you is that you cannot have joy until you let go of fear. And that includes trusting. I learned this when I was once in the city of Beaumont, Texas, my hometown, and we were visiting at Thanksgiving, and we were going to take a small plane ride from Beaumont all the way to Corpus Christi. It's about a five-hour ride, and I had been in that plane before, and I knew that sometimes the engine conked out. And when that happened, you needed to know the safest place to land and you needed to get down quick. So we are up above the surf, the, the ocean, the Gulf waves are crashing onto the shore and it is a wild shore. There are logs, debris, no towns, no strip malls, no airports. It's just one swampy coastline full of cows. Who knew there were cows on the Gulf Coast beach? So here we are flying and now I'm looking and I'm trying to find a place to land in case we have one of those emergencies. But all I can see is the sandy beach. Well, for one thing, we could hit one of those logs down there or one of those wreck debris down there from an old fishing boat or we could hit a cow or we could sink our nose of the plane into the sand and flip in over in. That seemed like a very bad idea. So then I looked at the, at the Gulf waves and I realized that if we tried to do a water landing, that the wings of our plane would probably float, but the cab of the plane would be beneath the water. <laughs> oh no, that wouldn't work. So now I'm sweating and I am looking and I am searching, where can we land in case of an emergency? I did that for five hours. And when we finally landed at the airport in Corpus Christi, Texas, I climbed out of the plane, my knees knocking, and I looked up at my husband and he said, wasn't that a beautiful flight on a beautiful day? I hadn't even realized it. I thought about that all year. And the next year when we had to take that very same flight, I prayed this, Lord, I give you the what ifs. What if this should happen? What if the plane should conk out? I give you my future and I give you my fear. Now, as soon as I saw those cows on the beach, I begin to get afraid again. What if we hit a cow? No, <laughs> I give you my fear. And the next thing I knew, I noticed something. 
there were cute little cows on the Texas beach and the waves sparkled like aqua sequins. There were shrimping boats out there with long streams of gulls surrounding them. It was a beautiful afternoon. And when we arrived in Corpus Christi, I popped out of the plane and I looked at my husband and I said, wasn't that a beautiful flight on a beautiful day? And he was like, mm -hmm. I noticed it. So it's up to you. It's not about the what ifs or the things that could go wrong or have gone wrong. It's that decision about trusting in God, no matter what. And then also, what good is your faith if you have no joy? If the joy of the Lord is our strength, then we need that joy. You know, you might look at me and go, well, I bet nothing bad ever happens to you. Well, <laughs> you probably don't know my testimony for one thing about my daughter being in a car crash and being in coma for a year and then waking up and raising a disabled child. I had problems. I had stress. My daughter is now in heaven. But just recently, just a few weeks ago, I had a crisis, trauma. I had a drop-in guest, an elderly guest who came to visit, wanted to stay the night. And then what happened next can be summed up with words like collapse, 911, ambulance, emergency room, pneumonia, severe pneumonia diagnosis. I want to tell you, I had a lot of opportunity to be afraid, to be traumatized. It was, a, it was amazing, the trauma that came with that situation. And then I realized I am letting trauma steal my joy. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm pushing my trauma on you. I'm pushing my fear about this situation on you. I'm giving it to you in exchange for your joy. That didn't mean that I was like, oh, well, it doesn't matter that all that happened. No, no, no. It doesn't mean that. It means that now I have the joy to be my strength and that I could manage whatever happened next because Jesus was there giving me supernatural joy simply because I asked him and I traded my trauma and my fear for his joy. So I want to encourage you to take time out whenever you're facing a crisis or fear and just dump that fear. He loves gifts like that. He doesn't want you to carry that stuff. He died on the cross, not only for your sins, but so that you could be free and giving God your fear and your doubt and all the other trauma that will help you be free to enjoy his peace that passes understanding and the joy of the Lord to be your strength. And then for the last point, I want to tell you about a friend of mine whose dog died. Very, very sad. But she said, I prayed and I told God that if my dog died, I would not follow him anymore. And I said, well, that's interesting. That means that your faith was only going to last five to 17 years. <laughs> and I said, do everybody a favor and get a new puppy. <laughs> Well, that really didn't hit the root of the problem. The root was that she thought she could hold God hostage and God does not play games. God is the ruler of the universe. He will give us peace, but you cannot threaten God. But here's what she did. She was in a great depression and little by little, she was able to look for things in her life to thank God for. It was hard. The first week, she had a really hard time coming up with something, but she came up with an idea and she thanked God for it. And then she finally graduated to where she could thank God daily for a blessing that was in her life. Her biggest problem was she wasn't observing the blessings and the love and the gifts that God was giving her because her depression had blocked her. So if you are fighting depression or the doldrums, start looking around and thanking God for the things that he has done for you and the things that will help you. And in conclusion to that, before I go into the final prayer that I'm going to share for my book, I want to remind everybody, you got to get into the drawing, go to joyfulwinner.com, joyfulwinner.com and sign up. We're about to have a drawing in just a few moments. And then tomorrow afternoon, you can continue to sign up until noon tomorrow. We are going to then announce 
all the winners. In a few minutes, we're going to announce the $25 gift card. Tomorrow, we have all of that list of loot that I showed you, plus more Amazon gift cards. So you want to get into that joyfulwinner.com. And you also want to get a copy of my book, Make Time for Joy, Scripture-Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And let me share the final prayer that I want to share with you. And here it is. It's called God's Direction. Dear Lord, though I try to look forward toward my future, I have no idea what's in store. And so I worry. I worry until I realize you've already created a plan filled with good, not disaster. You've written my future and filled it with hope. To know you care about my life is so comforting. It's yet another reason to trust you with all my heart. I submit to your plan because I know that I can trust you, that you will put me on the right path. As we journey together, help my heart to be right with you so that I will stay strong and on task. May you be pleased with my actions and attitudes as we walk together all the days of my life. When I trip, you inspire me with the goals that you yourself have helped me reach. You even use my missteps to teach me lessons that will keep me on the path you've set for me. You work out all things because I'm called according to your purpose. What joy I feel that the details of my life matter to you. And this is from my book, Make Time for Joy, releasing tomorrow, scripture-powered prayers to brighten your day, releasing Valentine's Day. And again, this is a prayer made out of scriptures, paraphrased, and my thoughts that I've added to it. And this is the joy break that you need. This is the impetus that will help you see joy in your life, no matter what 2023 brings, you can still have joy in your life. And I want to encourage you to all go to joyfulwinner.com and sign up. It's too late to sign up for the drawing at we're going to host in just a moment, but it's not too late to sign up for all the other prizes, which will include also, in fact, I'm going to share my screen again and show you all the beautiful things that it will show that you can win. So for the people who are outside the U.S., you can all win a copy of the God You Need to Know, Discover His Story, Experience His Love, and you can also uh, win one of our beautiful things. We've got all of these wonderful things. We've got a coloring Bible, the Encouraging Hearts Handbook, the Day-by-Day -Day Bible for Kids. We've got the Jesus Story for Kids. We've got Discovering the Good News of John, also from Pam. We've got cubic zirconian earrings, more Amazon gift cards. We've got Prayers to Share, which are little joy prayers, and we've got a cute book, about the words of Jesus for women. And we've got teapot earrings. And again, we've got uh, more of those um, wonderful, um, a wonderful, the God you need to know for the people living outside the US. So I'm going to stop my share again. And here we are. I think we're at the moment. We are at the moment for you to see if you are going to win today. And Rebecca has just put up our click to win. Here we have some names on it. So who is it going to be, Rebecca? Who is going to win? Here we go. The winner is going to be, is it, is it, is it, it's Candy Arrington. Candy. You are our winner today. You win a $25 Amazon card. Thank you for that. And so let's go back. Yes, I just want to tell everybody the contest is not over. This is a live. This is the first time we've done a live on my author page. So I know that this live is going to get more views throughout the day. So it's not too late for you. If this is still the 13th or the morning of the 14th, you can still sign up at joyfulwinner.com and you can be a part of the drawing of all of those wonderful things that I showed you. And I hope that you will. And and I hope that you will get a copy of the book, Make Time for Joy, Scripture Powered Prayers to Brighten Your Day. And I just want to pray a prayer of joy over you right now. And I'm, this is not in the book. This is just spontaneous. But dear Lord, 
We love you. Your son, Jesus, died on the cross for us. We receive his forgiveness and we give you our whole lives. We follow you with our whole hearts. We trade our fear and our doubt and our trauma for your peace and your joy. And we thank you so much. I bless all my dear friends watching. Bless them with a joyful day. And we pray that in Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And don't forget, pick up your copy. Make time for joy. Scripture-powered prayers to brighten your day. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.